Okay, we're going to do lateral earth pressures from surface loads today and compaction and Mononobe Okobe. Say that five times quickly. Um, I did update some of these slides since I posted your stuff, so I'll post new versions of it. So don't panic. Smile, pretend you're having fun. Okay. So we have done all, we've done our active earth pressure, we've done passive earth pressure, we've talked about the two classical methods for active earth pressure, which is uh, more cool, uh, Coulomb and um, Rankin. We talked about, uh, in particular in passive, <coughs> that we need to be very careful about how we calculate the passive, that um, rank, yeah, Rankin's always going to be a conservative. Uh, Coulomb's a real problem, particularly if you've got high friction angles or high uh, uh, interface friction angles. And that if you really want the right answer for passive, you should be using the log spiral. So now we're going to talk about all those other earth pressures that we can get. Um, so this one's pretty simple. You need to be able to calculate lateral earth pressures from induced surface loads. Um, there are, <clears throat> when, we go, when, we, when we're trying to take surface loads and convert them into lateral loads, there's um, three basic approaches plus some numerical methods. Um, one of the things we can do is we can uh, directly calculate the horizontal, sigma x, the horizontal stress from elastic theory. You know, we use elastic theory for stress distribution. Those of you that had 531 last quarter, remember that. Those of you who had it earlier than that may not remember that. Those of you who didn't have it will have to go remember that. Uh, but we, you know, when we, when we have a, a point load or a line load or a rectangular load, the load spreads out and we use Boussinet's stress distribution theory to do that. That's an elastic solution. Well, we can use the same elastic solutions, and instead of calculating the change in vertical stress, we can calculate the change in horizontal stress. Um, there's some issues with that, because those are based on an infinite half space, and, you know, if we've got a wall in place, you know, if we have a wall placed here, you know, we've got some finite load here, certainly that's not an infinite half space, and when the wall moves, the stresses are going to change. Um, but that's still a really common way. In fact, a bunch of the solutions I'm going to show you today use that. So that's one way we can do it. Another way we can do it is we can calculate the change in vertical stress using elastic theory, using our standard stress distributions. And then, excuse me, and then use whatever our, the appropriate active, sorry, I said active, the appropriate earth, earth pressure coefficient, whether it's active or at rest or something else, and we just multiply the vertical stresses by that, that lateral earth pressure coefficient that we, that we know is appropriate, and we'll get delta sigma z, for, we'll get delta sigma x from that. <clears throat> Sometimes this is a more appropriate approach. Um, there are, just like the old two to one distribution that we've, you've seen for vertical stress and may have used, there are some simplified uh, distributions based on uh, geometric, distribu di geometric dispersion of the of the loads, and we'll look at one of those today. Some of those have been validated, or at least compared using either numerical methods or, or laboratory tests. Um, and then finally, we, we can use the, we talked about how to calculate the, the lateral earth pressure using the Coulomb theory. We can actually use that, the, the Coulomb wedge theory and the graphical uh, techniques to actually calculate the lateral earth pressures due to any kind of loading, and I'll show you that too. It's just an extension of what we did last lesson. And then, whoops. And then finally, we can use uh, some numerical method, a finite element or finite difference method. Uh, uh, these are clearly more complicated, but can give us better answers if we can do the problem right. The problem there is in doing the modeling for the material properties. So let's look at the one, look, look at the um, the common ones that we'll run into. The simplest one is a surcharge load, where we have we have some kind of a fill that goes on forever in all directions. You know, we've got some fill behind the wall that goes on back here. And if you think about that, if I draw the fill in here, if you just think about this as being some kind of soil fill, you know, that's just more soil above where we were calculating the, the, the earth pressure before, right? The, the, the fill just looks like more soil. So this process is really no different than what we've been doing. We just use whatever the appropriate earth pressure theory you know, if it's ranking, it's uh, going to be sigma x times ka 
times whatever the Q is, you have the applied stress here. If it's Coulomb and you have a, a friction angle, the horizontal stress is going to be Ka times cosine delta because, remember, if it's Coulomb, your, your um, earth pressure is going to be acting at some angle delta here. So if you want the horizontal stress, we talked about this last time, that's going to be Ka times cosine delta times Q. Ooh, that prime's not supposed to be there. Um, so the, the simplest way to think about this is that's just like having that much more soil above your ground surf surface. So it's just the same. It's being applied across the whole area. So you just use uh, the active earth pressure, or if it's, well, as we'll talk about in a while, if the act is not the appropriate one. So it just looks like more soil. Um, if we have a point load, uh, this is the, uh, I, I took most of these figures out of the FHA manual, changed the notation so it made sense with the rest of my notation, but these are all out of the FHA manual for the most part. Uh, if there's a point load, uh, you, can, you can look this up in Poulos and Davis or one of the solutions. This is simply the elastic equation for the horizontal stress, just like we have an equation for the, ver the, the induced vertical stress around a point load. This is the equation for the induced horizontal stress around the point load. And so you can plug this in. Um, the, did I upload uh, stress distribution spreadsheets for you guys? I don't know whether I did or didn't. Are they on there? I'll post one. And I've got that coded up in a spreadsheet which you can use. Um, by the way, for those of you that don't know, uh, any, almost any elastic solution you'd ever want to use for geotechniques is in this uh, book that when I bought it cost $75 and now you can download it for free legally uh, and I'll, I, I'll put a link for that on the website too if it's not there right now. So if you, if you want any of these elastic solutions this is the place to go. Um, if you have an infinite line load so that means uh, this line this load goes on forever in this direction if you know if this is your wall so it's an infinite line load parallel to the wall. Uh, we just have a slightly different uh, solution. It's actually simpler than the point load. By the way, the point load, I should go back to that. Um, in plan view, if this is my wall and th this is my point load, we're actually computing the stress right here at this point of the wall. Obviously, on either side of that point, the stresses are going to be lower from a point load than they are from a... Uh, so this number is giving you the, the stress from the, at a point, uh, starting from the point load, this, this is where P is perpendicular to the wall. Does that make sense? Looking for... Well, it's X... Uh, it's, just, it's just a point load. It's a, a point load. Well, so as you... If I was to plot, um, let's see, if I was to plot at, at, let's say at this elevation, if I was to plot the uh, stress as a function of, uh, this is going to be the y direction into the, into the board, right? So if I was going to plot the stress in a y direction, if this is a wall, and this is y, and my point load's here, a stress distribution would look something like this. It goes down pretty quick when you get away from it. If you realize that, this this equation works in any direction. I should say this, this equation works in any direction. So um, if you take this r, you know, if you if you go out here, this r still applies, but now r is going to be um, the square root of x plus change in x plus c plus y, right? So it's going to get a lot longer. So and look how look at r squared in the bottom, right? And it's cubed in the bottom there. So it drops off pretty fast, right? I mean, normally when you do this, you're just going to calculate the load in the in the in a worse place. And lots of times you have a wall that has a bunch of point loads. You know, there's light posts or road signs. Or if you've got a point load, lots of times you have one every 50 feet along the wall. Not always. And so you sort of have to design for it. The worst case in any any case. It depends on what your situation is. If you only got one and it's really bad, you might just change the wall design in that one area. 
Okay, line load, so that's line load parallel to the wall, so you understand that one. So that's a, that one is uniform across, in, 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 the, in the y direction, this one is uniform because it doesn't change. Obviously it changes in z. Um, so this is a, a, a finite line load perpendicular to the wall. So in plan view, so this one in plan view, this is my wall, here's the retained soil side, and I have a load that's applied just over a finite length in this direction. And again, this one will have a distribution in the y direction like that. It'll be higher near the, near the point. Uh, and th and this, this equation, which is much, much more complicated, um, is, uh, again, for this point right here. And because this is for the infinite strip load, so this is this is for like if you've got a narrow road embankment or something, it goes on forever and ever in this direction compared to the wall. Uh, and this is again a direct elastic solution for that. I'll give you a sheet of paper that has all the um, solutions all printed on one sheet of paper. And I think I, g I gave you chapter three of uh, the Astro Bridge Manual, right? Yes, no, maybe so. Nobody looked. Nobody cares. Jack, did I give you chapter three of the Astro Bridge Manual? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um, this is, whoops, I don't have a title for this one. This is for a infinite strip load. Um, it was this is specifically designed for flexible walls. So this would be appropriate for sheet pile walls or for um, MSE walls. So and this is one of those geometric appro approximations. Um, I've given you this paper. You you can look it up and, and check the summaries of when it's appropriate or not appropriate. And so what they've done in this one is simply use, uh, assume that the distribution is on a one-to-one -one slope here, and there's no induced stress above that. At that point, you calculate Q prime, which is, would be the induced stress over this uh, increased area. So the sa same load over, the, over the, the larger area. And then, um, they use a uniform stress from there down to the base of the wall. And obviously that can't go on forever. So there's, um, I think there's some limitation. You, you have to check the text to see the limitations of it. So this is one of the, and this one, they, they, th these, in this paper, this paper is worth reading. They compared uh, using um, the Coulomb wedge theory, um, um, the Boussinesque stress distribution, which is basically the previous one we just showed you. This approximate solution, another approximate solution, uh, did all three of them. And I think they compared them to centrifuge tests. I believe that's correct. And said that this was as good as any of the others and much less complicated. Uh, but again, it's, this is one of those uh, a geometric approximate solutions. But it's really easy to do, so it's a nice one to have. So I'd commend for you to read Georgiitis and and Ganastopolopis, is that it? Anacostopolis, maybe that's right. Um, now, if you look at these, it's interesting that some of these solutions, let me go back to all these, all these elastic solutions. All right, so this solution, let's see, change colors. This solution has that little term in it. This solution does not. This solution has that little term in it. This solution does not. And what's that little term? Poisson's ratio. So you need to know something about Poisson's ratio. Um, so here's some guidance on Poisson's ratio. Um, this, this comes from uh, Kohalwe's uh, tome on um, all kinds of uh, empirical fits to everything you ever want to know for geotechnical engineering. 
and the second one is from Choutman and Kalhawi. If you if you need some if you need an equation to program, this is a nice equation to program. Um, it's not necessarily more accurate than these, and probably it probably isn't, because it doesn't account. It doesn't you know? There's no there's no uh, um, engineering judgment in the equation. Once you put it in your spreadsheet, it's just there. So um, I would commend that you actually use some engineering judgment when selecting Poisson's ratio for these. But this is one of the problems with using the elastic solutions: is those those that those that are basically against the confined space, Poisson's ratio is going to be important. Uh, uh, and, and for instance, the point load is not important, um, and you're going to have to guess a Poisson's ratio. And I think this slide is not in your things, but I'll post it for you guys. Okay, and the last thing we can do is, is use our Coulomb wedge analysis. Now, we did this before. Um, remember, we did our little Coulomb wedge analysis, and we talked about how you, you, you can just keep drawing wedges here, and eventually you find out where the maximum PA is, and then that's going to be equal to this value. And that's, now, that's the, the lateral earth force for the entire height of the wall. Well, if you want the distribution over the wall, all you have to do is do the same analysis again, but this time do it at a higher location. You're going to put your wedges in at that location, do the same, the, the same process, and you're going to come up with the lateral earth force for that part of the wall. And you do that again at another location, and you'll come up with the lateral earth force at that part of the wall. And so you can do this as finely as you want to. You just keep marching up the wall. And when you're eventually done, you've got a distribution of the lateral earth pressure, which includes everything. It includes the, it includes the surcharge load. includes the, So this includes everything. So this is, again, there's a very convenient way to do this when you have a very complex loading. Um, and this is a limit equilibrium method that doesn't depend on elastic theory, where all these other solutions that we talked about all assume um, you know, these all. This is this. This solution is really modeled as if that that soil goes on forever, ever in this direction, and there's no wall there. So, you can make the case that the um, Coulomb theory is actually going to be more accurate than the other ones because it's at least, it's at least a limit equilibrium theory. Okay. Questions about surface loads. You'll find a lot of different solutions other than the ones that I gave you. Um, the ones that I gave you are, I, I took them all out of the FHA w, FHWA manual because that's the one I gave you. Um, and I'm trying to think what other solutions there are. There, there are other solutions for these, and there are other approximate solutions uh, besides this one, uh, there's another approximate solution where they assume this goes off on a two to one, two to one slope. Um, but I think this set will do 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 well for you. And I and I gave you a problem to work on these in your um, problem set two, I think, right? Did anybody download problem set two yet? Anybody look at it? Jack, did you look at problem set two? I just pick on Jack Day. All right. <clears throat> 